And for our next session, we're going to look at a topic of utmost importance uh, at a time where the world is facing grave and unforeseen challenges, particularly in light of the pandemic. Um, the socioeconomic challenges of the pre-COVID-19 times still exist and the world has to actually deal with them. This session, particularly with the ABLF Talks, connects with ministers, activists, corporate humanitarians and global aid organizations to really examine and to learn more about the impact of the pandemic on the 17 identified UN Sustainable Development Goals, really in an effort to support the world's underserved and most vulnerable people. And in this session coming up now, we're going to discuss the UN SDGs, a greater urgency with higher stakes. And I'm going to be talking to the Minister of State for Food and Water Security in the UAE. She is a lady who's responsible for monitoring the national food stocks here in the UAE, investing in food technology, and really following up international relations in this specific area. And her responsibilities as a minister include overseeing the development of the necessary infrastructure that would ensure the country's few food security objectives in line with um, the UAE Centennial 2071 plans. Her Excellency also represents the UAE federal government in the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations, as well as on the International Center for Biosaline Agriculture. So she's kept very, very busy and I'm absolutely delighted to welcome to ABLF Talks, Her Excellency Mariam al Mehri. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Hello to everybody and thank you for your time and I hope you're all well and safe. Thank you for having me at ABLF City. It's the first time for me, so looking forward to it. Indeed it is. It's, it's great to have you virtually here with us. It's so important to looking at this topic as well. And when we look at the impact of the pandemic and the disruptions in so many sectors, Take us maybe a step through what the UAE is doing to actually remain on track when it comes to the sustainable development goals. Thank you so much. Yes, undoubtedly, um, COVID-19 has disrupted all of our plans, government plans, NGOs, the private sector, but we are really determined to, to unify our efforts and, and really redouble and um, be able to then meet the SDGs in 2030. Um, I have an expression that I like to use, uh, it's build back better. This is our motto now that we're trying to, to focus on, meaning that we're um, using future forecasting for better strategic planning, also for policy making. Um, the UAE has done so, and that's why we've introduced ministerial portfolios such as AI, uh, food and water security, uh, advanced technologies, youth, so over the last few years, um, I'd say our, le our leadership have really, you know, having DNA, uh, having foresight in their DNA, they've really looked into these portfolios and understood that there is a need to put these in place. Um, also driving factors in women empowerment, as well as renewable um, energy in the region are really things that we've been putting a lot of focus um, on to try and accelerate our efforts toward the SDGs. If I put a lens on, on, on the food security portfolio, really going through this pandemic, I think many people have realized the importance of or what food security is. Many um, few years back, maybe weren't so sure, why is there a minister of state now put for food security? What does food security mean? But I think going through this pandemic has really been an eye opener to all understanding what it actually means for a country to be food secure and why we're putting so much emphasis on making sure that we're also we've got plans in place and we're ready for for future um, uh, crisis and, and building more resilient food systems as well. Without a doubt, I think you're so right there, the concept of food security. And I think particularly with the disruption, you know, caused by the pandemic around the world, all countries are really looking at food security. So in many ways, I think the, the foresight that the UAE had to make sure that there's a minister in charge of this, I mean, is definitely commendable. And we can see with the work that you're doing, it keeps you very, very busy. So it, uh, it's, it's, it's a full packed agenda for your portfolio. Talk to us in terms of, you know, the UN uh, SDGs and what's the most difficult, if, if that's the word I suppose, to achieve as you try to, to build back better, particularly the challenges that have been brought about by the pandemic? So the sudden onset of COVID-19, 
has come at a time when the SDGs were somewhat gaining traction, some a bit more than others, um, but we really saw so many countries taking significant steps in, in, in their progress. Um, the rapid initial spread of the virus and the second wave that we're now experiencing are really hugely impairing um, capacities to meet the goals by uh, 2030. Uh, countries have had to reset their priorities, they've had to reallocate resources, and this was necessary really to, to save lives as well, which is naturally the overriding priority at this time. I would suggest the most directly impacted SDG at this time is obviously SDG 3, um, good health and well-being. Uh, the pandemic uh, has really exposed uh, our, our global um, foods or our global health systems. And uh, this has, of course, severely undermined prospects for achieving global health by 2030. And it's also critically having an effect, a far reaching effect, actually, on the other SDGs as well. There's also SDG 4, the quality of education is being severely impacted. Uh, UNESCO have estimated that 1.25 billion students are being affected uh, by this pandemic. And poorer students, of course, are suffering disproportionately as they often lack the resources to be able to have any electronic devices or network connections to be able to study remotely. In many parts of the world, the pandemic is exasperating the crisis in delivering on clean, uh, water and sanitation targets, so SDG 6, um, weak economic growth and the absence of decent work, SDG 8, um, and above all, uh, a crisis in poverty, SDG 1, and food security, which um, I'm, um, as you said, putting a lot of effort in to look at. So the UAE always tries to put the efforts not only on a national level, but we also want to be a global player when it comes to food security. So working hard on trying to do whatever we can to elevate the number of hungry people that are going to bed every night. And in my eyes, the, the, the response to the, to the pandemic should not be delinked to the actions we're taking to, to achieve the SDGs. Um, in achieving the SDGs, we, will, we'll be, we have a solid foundation and we have basically a firm path to overcome this crisis and to, to make the world a better place for humanity and for planet Earth too. And indeed, just as you say, it really goes to show that everything is is interconnected in so many ways. And I think we really have to, to look at that. And I think the pandemic, without a doubt, has made that very, very clear that almost one won't work without the other. When we look at food and water security, how do you think that it impacts, I suppose, all of the other SDGs? You mentioned it briefly there, particularly, I suppose, zero hunger. Um, clean water sanitation. But only recently I, I did something with the World Energy Council and they were also looking at the energy, um, you know, mix into this food, water, energy. It's just about everything is related in terms of making sure that there is a better world out there for people. Yes. I mean, food and water is the basis of life as well as the air we breathe. So if we don't take care and we don't provide access of food and water to people, we can forget achieving all the SDG goals. It's, it's the basis of life. And as you rightly said, food, water, and energy are interestability interlinked together. And basically one affects the other in one way or, or another. So um, if we look at the Food and Water Security Office in the UAE, we were set up in 2017. And the main aim being, we don't just wanna be food secure today, but we also wanna be food secure in the future too. So when you think of the definition of what food security actually means for a country, it's enabling its citizens to have access to safe, nutritious, sufficient uh, food, to uh, have an active and healthy life at affordable prices at all times. And this is the main uh, point here, at all times, meaning also in a crisis. And um, again, I come back to the foresight um, in 2017, we were set up. Uh, we then developed the national food security strategy, aligning all the stakeholders in the country to be able to look at a target that we wanted to reach in the food security domain. And uh, we also set up the governance model. And when the crisis hit us, it in a way was a big test. Uh, our, our plan was tested, our programs were tested, our communication was tested. And I have to say, we. We were well set up to maneuver 
uh, through the, the problems that, that we were facing. Um, um, I think most of you know the UAE does depend a lot on imports. 90% of our food uh, comes from outside. And so we're very much dependent on the global food supply chains. And when the planes were abruptly stopped in March um, and the containers were not coming in anymore, it really disrupted our food supply. But uh, due to our leadership, our partnerships, our well-planned programs, we were able to maneuver through these, these times. But it's, it's been a real eye-opener, a huge lesson learned and a whole loads of opportunities that have arised. Just thinking about reprioritizing certain areas of our strategy, uh, using the momentum of, of people being more aware of of nutrition, of food waste, and trying to use those uh, those opportunities to drive and accelerate the things that we wanted to do uh, before. Indeed, and I think we're, we're very lucky here in the UAE. Nobody is certainly going hungry and um, some great initiatives really in place. But as you said too, it's looking to the long term. And when we think about it post COVID, what are the, I suppose, the national and international efforts that uh, you can put in place to actually maybe bolster the food and security of the country? So uh, looking at the UAE in the past years, you know, uh, this year it's officially for the UAE, um, the year of uh, designing the next 50 years or planning the next 50 years. So when I look back in the past 50 years, we've really, uh, or our food security is really based on the UAE being a global hub for food trade. And this we wanna of course continue doing, we wanna continue the agribusiness side, we wanna continue uh, the flow and the volume of food coming in and out of the UAE. But what we would like to change now moving forward or transform into is um, maybe being less dependent on the net food imports into the UAE itself. So we're really trying to transform now and become also a hub for uh, knowledge and technology when it comes to hot, arid climates like the UAE. We're really trying to bolster our efforts on, on creating a blueprint for, for agriculture technology, ag tech uh, space, trying to encourage uh, FDIs, so foreign direct investments to come into the country. We're really trying to uh, step up our research and development to try and adopt and adapt uh, technology here in our country, uh, push uh, the levels on human capacity building. So this is all on the on the supply side and on the demand side, we're really looking into how we can reduce uh, food loss and food waste, how we can improve our nutritional intake, uh, being a country that has over 200 nationalities, everyone loves their own uh, flavors and foods. We really have to think of how we can join forces and ensure that we're not putting so much waste in the bin that we're um, uh, thinking about uh, the whole uh, food system as a whole and trying to transform into more resilient and more sustainable food systems. I think, you know, we hear a lot about that here in the UAE and it must be also very encouraging, you know, to you to actually see this on the agenda and to hear people talking about it and the awareness I think that's in place and I think the tremendous work that's been done even with, you know, throughout COVID-19 with the restaurants coming together, all the food suppliers. And really, I think there's been a, there's been a, almost a national uh, unity effort in terms of, I think, creating that awareness around food security as well. So this must encourage you to see, I think, other people getting involved, not just the government. Oh, absolutely. And it's, it's lovely to see so many more people actually growing food at home. Um, I think during the lockdown, uh, when you're in a confined space and, and you start thinking about um, what you're eating and starting to start new new things that you've seen. I, I, I know a lot of people that started farming at home, uh, whether it's on their balcony, whether it's a small setting indoors, a tray they've, they've done, and they've, they found some, some peace in growing and, and having the whole family gather and, and the kids seeing uh, and respecting food, it's it's a it's a fantastic opportunity to to build upon as we want to improve uh, nutrition, as we want to um, build that uh, the value around food and get our our children to value food more and and understand how important it is that we don't put any edible food into the into the bin. So that's been fantastic. 
and um, and really also as as I said, um, so they're interested in growing food. They're interest they're interested in not um, putting less food in the waste. And I guess also when because of the lockdown, you we actually love to eat out here in the UAE. Um, but during the lockdown, that wasn't possible. So there was a lot more meals cooked at home. And I think this brought an essence of um, the food, um, let's say the value of food back to the families and having meals together with the families. I think this was a really important aspect or a good side of, of what has happened in the past months. Indeed, you're so right. And I think we see this right around um, the country indeed, and we see people, and I just recently read an article about people growing food, uh, various, all sorts of vegetables and, you know, great, doing great sort of small farming in a scale. But also we look, I think, at, you talked a little about the technology too, and some tremendous initiatives here, I think, in the UAE and the, the growing that is going on and the fisheries and all of that. So this also helping so much in terms of food security. And of course, also it reduces the time in importing a lot of food and transportation and all of that. So it actually has, I suppose, a circular impact as well when it comes to it. It's not just food and water security, but it's, it's helping with emissions. And it's really, I think it ticks a lot of boxes. Absolutely. I mean, as I as I said, we we want to transform into more sustainable food systems. So ag tech is something that is of great priority for us, and we're actually seeing a lot of ag tech facilities now established here in the UAE. You can now have organic salmon that's grown locally. Uh, we've got quinoa. We've got blueberries. Uh, things that you would not imagine that we could grow these kind of things in the desert, but because of technology. Um, it is now possible and really these technologies have enabled us to be able to grow these uh, foods sustainably uh, without um, uh, too much use of our precious resources. And we always have to think of water. The UAE is a water scarce, water, water scarce country and we really have to think of how we can make use of it such as an aquaculture when you're thinking of RAS systems where you're recirculating the water. Um, and making sure that uh, you're efficiently using it. So these are all great examples of how technology has been has been adopted and adapted here in the UAE to, to grow some superfoods. Um, and we really are looking into how we can grow the space even more and attract more to come here. Because we feel, again, we, we want to become this hub of knowledge and technology and we want to help um, others around us who have the same climate, the same challenges that we do on an um, environmentally, uh, how they can overcome this and grow food. And indeed, you know, when we look at uh, this particular series and what we're working on, it is the Asian Business Leadership Series, of course. But um, what I'd like to ask you is how do you think Asia and the West can, I suppose, redesign and realign their goals to um, a more sustainable future? So I think the pandemic has really um, underscored how interconnected we are as a global community. And I feel building the partnerships at, at this time is a, more essential than ever before. It's so important that we exchange knowledge, that we um, talk to each other, that we um, um, try and help wherever we can. And, and the UAE really, I you know, they are the leadership it's, it's unbelievable how much they have done um, also to support other countries, um, our, our partnerships with, uh, with many countries, not just on the food level, but also on the medical level. Um, any aid uh, that was required, we were there. Um, we stood by um, our brothers and sisters everywhere around the world to try and help them through, through these hard times because that's, that's a value that's instilled in us from, from our founding father uh, Sheikh Zayed, um, God bless his soul, and it's 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 something we this this journey where we're following and 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 we these values are instilled in us that we continue this this journey in all aspects. Um, so for for me, what I see is really important is the exchange of of um, of knowledge, the exchange of technology, what what works, um, and really help each other to try and push the bar more on, on what we can do domestically as well, try and really push more on how we can grow food 
uh, more domestically so that we reduce um, the carbon uh, footprint, how we can engage in smallholder and medium holder farmers, um, women empowerment um, in this sector. There's a lot we can do on exchanging knowledge and, and this is really essential that we think of we think of unity right now because time is not on our side. Um, we've got 10 years to go. There's there's a lot to be done and um, the crisis has really, let's say, put us a few steps back. And so we have to accelerate much more than ever before. And this can only be done if we work together. And of course, just what you're talking about there, you know, it's not the time to, to, to work in silos and it's, uh, but at the same time, when we look around the world and even the IMF was talking about it, almost the poor getting poorer and the fact that we have been set back, you know, on some of the goals at the moment, a question that had just come in here, um, also saying, will localizing the SDGs actually allow for a swift and more fitting solution? Or I think what you're saying too, is it, it's the time really to be helping each other more than ever. Yes, look, there are there are things we need to focus on locally um, um, and we have to always think about, OK, what are the needs of, of our people that are our neighbors or our community, um, but also not forgetting that we are people on planet Earth and we need to help each other. And uh, this is this is the time for um, for lending a hand. Uh, this is a time for, for, for empathy, for listening, for being compassionate. Um, again, we, can, we can't be more thankful to our first line of defense who are working 24-7, uh, keeping everyone safe. Um, uh, there's been so beautiful initiatives done by the communities as well to help um, the first line of defense with food packets and, and just lovely notes saying thank you for all that, that you do. Um, being here in the UAE, we are in a way a global community. So, so we we hear what's going on around the world just just by by talking to people within our family. So it's it's really it's uh, it's something that's that we live with, and it's it's part of our lives anyway to always help and be there for for our neighbors and brothers and sisters. So unity at this time is extremely important and. Uh, and it's just lovely to see when when someone smiles up at you and just says thank you. Yes, indeed, and uh, I mean it. I suppose too, it's a uh, people are developing new habits and probably more community focus too, which is also so good to see. Another question that has come in here, in terms of looking at some of the key SDGs that if we had to pick are possibly one more crucial than the other, or what's more crucial in terms of the recovery from the global pandemic. Do we need to just look more holistically or you know, is there one more than the other we really need to be looking at? Oh, that's a hard question. Um, I find the SDGs are so interlinked with each other. When one is affected, it really pulls back others as well. Um, because I focus a lot of my efforts on SDG 2 um, and on, on the food security file and now the water security file just recently, it's really been um, uh, it's very difficult to separate or de-link any SDGs from, from each other. I feel it is a holistic approach that must be taken. And when you look to the future, what are you doing in terms of building, you know, more partnerships, stronger partnerships with, with other countries, with other organizations, you know, to make sure that I suppose we all rise together, so to speak. Lots of virtual calls, lots of virtual conferences like this one here. So uh, talking about our experiences, talking about the lessons learned, um, exchanging ideas. Um, really, when we went through the pandemic, there, because of some of the restrictions that happened, it really, um, yeah, you, we had to reach out to so many other players as well, looking at sourcing or diversification or diversifying our food source imports looking from where we can get certain uh, foods from, linking that with the traders. Um, it's really been an experience of, uh, yeah, of, of how the world is so interconnected and that it's extremely important that we, um, yeah, focus and unify what we're doing. Indeed, I as we're hearing that, you know, around the world, and I know we're going to have a topic later on talking about globalization and talking about global trade, but that concept of, you know, the actions, I suppose, of any 
one person, sometimes one country without a doubt, and its impact on others. And I suppose also a concept of education to and awareness about really how important the SDGs are for everybody. And also here in the UE getting the, our younger population involved as well. I mean, again, when it comes to food security, water security, do you think the role of education will have a lot more to play in the future as well? Absolutely. I, I, we're very lucky here in the UAE that we the SDGs have been really embedded in our curriculum and our education. We also have a national uh, um, SDG Council that basically oversees all the efforts taken um, by government, by all the sectors to ensure that we're aligned with all the SDG goals. So these are monitored very, very closely. Um, so it's um, if you ask a child who goes to a school in the UAE, um, they will know what the 17 SDGs are. They'll maybe start from the younger years and knowing it as a song and then later on actually go into the, the details of it as well. So it's really embedded um, in the, the children and the millennial, how important the SDGs are and how the UAE really takes this seriously and, um, and really wants to not just look at it again from a national level, but be a global player when it comes to how we can support all SDGs around the world. That is so important, particularly, I think, when we look to the future. Just before I let you go, if there was any one request you had to the people of the UAE in terms of what can everybody really do to make sure that we're all heading, you know, towards the fulfillment of the SDGs and indeed towards a more sustainable future when it comes to food and water security. So it comes down to the word of unity. This is what I feel is the most important point um, right now. And the UAE stands here to um, lend its hand. Um, I can speak uh, on the food and water security uh, sectors, any countries that want to um, discuss um, ways forward, ask us how we maneuvered this, how we developed our strategy, how we developed our governance model, what targets are we going to, how we went about it. We're, we're here to, to um, lend our hand and to, to support in any way we can. Um, I really think that we all have to do our part in this and it also comes down to us as individuals as well, not just governments and NGOs and private sector, but us all as individuals. When you just think of our food system, this is one of the SDGs. If you yourself go and buy a food from the supermarket and how you prepare it at home and what you put in the bin, this already influences um, that SDG on um, SDG no number two. So I always emphasize to everyone that this is, it's not just governments it's really it really comes down to the individuals and we all have a part to play in this so i can only say that unity can help us build back better to where we're heading to and make sure we reach the 2030 sdg goals indeed that's so important um thank you so much the minister of state for food and water security from the uae her Excellency, Mariam El Mehri, thank you so much for joining us. It's been an absolute delight and a pleasure to have this conversation with you. Thank you so much. Thank you to everybody. Stay safe and well. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye.